Hi Saskatoon. You know, this Prairie Land Park thing is confusing to me. Is there actually anybody out there that really believes that Mark Regeer is always being truthful when he talks? Because I'm not one of them. I can, I can tell you that honestly. I don't believe very much of what he says because sooner or later it proves that he says the exact opposite. So you never know which one of those two statements could be the truth. 2015, he gave an interview he stated how well the track was doing and it was doing better than the neighboring tracks that are having issues in the provinces beside us. Well, that's not the case because obviously there's, they made money last year and we didn't even run. So that falls back to his management and uh, his, his lacking of ability of, to run a track because from 2015 to 2019 to 2020, they didn't even run. So in four years, he took what was supposed to be an outstanding business according to his statement to nothing in four years that's all due to him because that's the goal that they want to go to honestly that's what i believe but take a look he's he's making a comment right now on john gormley which is interesting john didn't question him on it because he states that he can't even get jockeys it's you know it's impossible to get jockeys except alberta's doing it and they got lots of tracks and manitoba's doing it and Ontario's doing it. Everybody can do it except for him. And since he's the top manager in charge of all this, it really shows another failing of his. But let's look at his overall goal. He wants to bring in a soccer team. Why? Because it's tax-free land. He doesn't pay tax now. He claims he doesn't get any money from the city and it's only a benefit and that they don't take any money from the province and they, they do get nine point some million from the federal government they've got over the years, which a lot of it was earmarked supposed to be ag or Western diversification. He even went to city council to try to get them to write a letter, which they did, to try to get money from the province and the federal government for $10 million uh, growth forward, to forward or whatever account, so that he could build some more stuff, which will compete with more tax paying businesses outside. He runs all these businesses within, and he said, oh, it's for the greater good. It's only for the greater good if it exceeds the limits of the businesses outside that can't handle a certain scale of things. Well, when he competes head to head with your business, tell me if it's for the greater good, because he's not paying property tax and he pays $100 rent. And then uh, in uh, 2017, he got $71,000 given to him by the city of Saskatoon, which was taken legitimately on a bylaw tax. And they gave it back to him for improvements. So obviously we've been giving him money every year that he doesn't want to talk about. So what, what are we going to do with professional team? They're not going to pay any property tax. It's a, it's a gimme for him. And really the reason he wants horse racing all along is just to gamble. So now that he cut out horse racing and he offered them less days than they need to actually pay their bills, oh, right, we're going to wash out horse racing. But all of a sudden now he's bringing in Alberta race teams for 10 days. Maybe you should wonder why. Because ethically he needs that because if he doesn't run for 10 days, he won't be able to keep his million dollar venture out at Sports on Tap for the money he makes there. So he's running racing at a loss. It doesn't matter because really the gambling is all he cares about. So this is what we've come to. And you can either believe it or don't. But if you look into it, you have to believe that this is who this guy is. And he is lining up now to level the horse barns. The problem is, is that I understand that those horse barns and even maybe this grandstand was built by the horsemen. So it brings to question, since the city owns the land, who, uh, who has the authority to level that? The city owns it. They have to approve any demolition out there anyway, a demolition permit. But I believe city council also has to approve any alterations to that site. And they're under no obligation to do so. They have to prove that they have some reason that they have to do it. And there's lots of site out there that could be built for other things. Like if they want to build a soccer field, put it right on top of Sports on Tap. I'll put up a picture later to prove the fact that it'll fit right on top of Sports on Tap because they want to rebuild that anyway. Why don't you put your pro soccer team there so you don't drag all the traffic to the public subdivision right down Roo Street past all the houses. How about you just come straight in off Lauren? Makes more sense for a mass public event, isn't it? There's no logic to this. All they care about is pushing hardworking ag people aside and that his own views for a long time have been to try to find a way to screw this industry. The same way he did for Regina, the same way he did for Yorkton, all he did is gather up all the betting because he's just about the betting, all about the gambling. And the city's saying, well, it's not really a bar and it's all within ag zoning and it's okay. That's what the city solicitor says, obviously. There's no zoning issues out there, even with the catering kitchens and banquet halls. Oh, no, no, that's OK. That's we, we don't do that. So if you're a business that has any zoning issues 
and you look at how tightly your zoning has been constrained to by the city or a change of use and you wonder why are these guys getting a free pass maybe you should have a bunch of city councillors on your board or maybe you should have some influential rich people that uh, really want things to happen and they'll just turn a blind eye because they're obviously not applying the rules across the board equally and so that's got to bother people but or maybe it won't I mean, uh, the city council is playing that, oh, there's nothing they can do, except if you read the lease, they realize there is things they can do and they don't have to approve a lot of things. So they're playing the game that, oh, it's not us. It's not us. Nothing we can do. Uh, Charlie likes to follow, so he's going to keep following. He did for four and a half years. But I was thinking maybe David Curtin, even maybe Bev Dubois could step up and be a leader on this. Bev, she's actually a member of Prairie Land Park, but she's asked good questions in the past. How about Darren Hill? He said he wanted a, a review as to what was going on out there and a real look at what's going on by the administration. Haven't heard of that happening, but it's quietly everything keeps getting pushed ahead. Maybe, maybe the game is over and maybe people should start being accountable for those actions. My name is Kerry Tarasoff and I just think that we should care more about people that really work for a living and care less about these, these uh, high paid executives that are playing games with people that work hard for a living. So please care. Thank you.